uh, the tears are commonly occur right in the mid muscle belly sure. of the hamstring, mm -hmm. and those are the ones that heal the fastest. If you did tear up in this area here, up by the the butt S bones, the sit bone, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to take longer. Yep. It, yeah, it just that's how it works. Right. Uh, number two. Okay, gentle range of motion. My favorite way to do gentle range of motion. Bob, do you want to get this ball? Sure. Or if you have a ball, it works really good because you can re lay relaxed, use your good leg to help your sore leg, and just work back and forth in a pain-free range. You know, if you get way out to here and it starts to hurt, don't go that far. Just work it in here. And you're going to do that for a few minutes, like three times a day. And you're, do, you're starting to put a little strain on the muscles right. so that it's healing strong. Yep. It, it, right. And as I'll, I'll show you, there's a really good way to transition into strengthening with the ball. We'll get into that in a few minutes. Now, the, I am a big proponent of using the ball, particularly for hamstring strengthening, because I've already used it for range of motion, but if I lift my butt up in the air and do the exact same motion, that's all hamstring. Yeah, and that's it's really working worked it hamstring very good. Well. Full range of motion all the way out to extension, straight knees, and you're going to bring it up all the way in. Now, assuming this doesn't give you any sharp pain and re-injure it, you're going to work this, you know, 10 repetitions, and then you're going to give it a little bit of a rest. You could start, Brad, right, just pushing your heels down yep. in and not lift your butt up sure. and pull it back. Exactly. So just to, to, as, a, as a starting point. So you can just do isometrics. Yeah. Hold well, it. I meant pushing down and, and pushing down at the same time, roll it on oh. your knee. Oh, right. Like that. Yep. Just like that, right, without lifting your butt up. Yeah. And, so. and that's the nice thing about the ball is you can make it, this is not can, so hard. This is quite a bit harder. And then as it gets stronger and you can do three sets of 10 like this, and it's my right leg I want to strengthen, my left leg will go over the top. That works a little bit harder. When that gets too easy, I can just go on one leg. It's getting better. You're starting to walk normal. Then it's time to do some cross-friction massage and get into that muscle and break up that scar tissue so it heals good and strong. Also promote blood flow. Get a little hyperemia and there get you the blood go. flow going. So. so if you want to do some manual cross-friction massage with your hand, uh, this is something that you may want to do in a long seated position, like on a couch or you could go sure. on the floor so that there's some slack in the muscle. Sure. You know, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have a, a wall to lean against or something so you're comfortable. And the fibers go this direction. So cross friction massage, you're going to, I like to use, it's a big muscle. You're going to get yeah, into that Yeah, you really got to get in there. And that's, look at how he's, he's kind of moving his wrist back and forth yeah. to help. It's a, it's a heavy duty muscle. Uh, I didn't, and actually right there, I can feel it right there. It's not completely healed. Uh, so I need, I need a little so he, more. Yeah, he's really digging down deep. And generally, again, the rule of thumb applies here also. If you start doing it and within a few minutes, like within 30 seconds, it actually starts to feel worse, yep. then maybe it's too soon to do right. this. Yep. I generally don't find that to be true on right. muscle tears. Generally, yep. you, you can tolerate. But if it starts to feel better or numb or the same, yeah, keep doing it. Yep, get in there. And typically, you know, you're going to do it for, you know, a few minutes or until your hand gets sore. Usually your, your hand gets sore in a couple, three minutes, and you got to give it a rest. And, and that's what hamstring. So I'm going to put my <coughs> left leg over the top. And if you do it this way, you can. It just I was going to say you want to first start probably with both legs yeah. on it. And if it doesn't feel like it's getting in deep enough, then cross. Right now I'm at the phase where I need to be crossing and getting in there. And then you just, you'll find it like right there. I'm on that sore spot I want to work. And I'm just going to work on that. And I use these preventatively, Brad. Yeah. I, I, I foam roll almost every day on my hamstring because I'm doing those kettlebell swings. Sure. And uh, they really work the hamstring. And yeah. if, I, if I don't watch it, I can tell like it almost feels like it's going to, you know, it's getting really sore, like it's going to tear. Sure. So, so uh, keep, I feel, yeah, yeah. So keep the muscle pliable for, for yep, maintenance exactly. as well as part of the rehab. And you're usually going to do that for about three to five minutes. Next thing you do is some weight-bearing strength training. And to do that, one good way to do it is get a high step, you know, so that you can see my knees at about a 90, my hips at a 90. I'm going to use a stick, the boyo stick, to balance myself. And this will work. It's going to work the quads quite a bit, but it's doing a, a fair amount of hamstring work too when you get yeah, this especially, high. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. When yep. you're that high, now you're getting into the hamstring you and, bet. and glute max a little bit there. So it's a great way to work the hamstring. How does that feel on your hamstring? Actually, it feels pretty good, Bob. 
I, I'm getting excited because uh, I'm going to 